I got a question for you guys. Are you in the mood for something a little bit unique, a little bit classy, but unapologetically masculine? Something that's gonna kind of set you apart from the crowd with your own distinct and unique scent trail? Well, you're in luck because I have five fragrances that will do exactly just that and that are that. So when we return, we're gonna tear the cellophane off of them, see what they're good for, verify what situations they're good for, why they're great for winter, that and more, so stay tuned. Welcome back. So I have promised you five unique and classy fragrances that are unapologetically masculine. What do I mean by that? You gotta be a little bit careful about your interactions with other people. These fragrances are like, you know what? Forget that. What, there was a time before that was even an issue. There's a time in the future where that won't be an issue. These fragrances are already there. They're that classy and they're that unique. So today we're gonna look at the, each one of them, see what's great about them, and why they might be scents that you want to add to your rotation. The very first fragrance we're gonna look at came out in 2009. It's from perfumer Natalie Lorson, one of my favorite female perfumists. It is... Mandarina Duck Black. Let's check out that presentation. This one has an interesting presentation. It kind of reminds me of my thumbnails with the large letters that kind of cover up the whole surface. But the bottle itself is a matte finish, kind of like a satin finish, and the letters are glossy, which is makes for an interesting look. This consists of powdery and woody notes. The top is bergamot, tangerine, and black pepper. The heart has more of a floral quality with the African orange flower and the Thierry flower. And that floral heart is rounded out nicely with the aroma of tonka bean. With that really nice trifecta of a base which is vanilla, sandalwood, and Virginian cedar. Let's check out that juice. Atomizer is nice. Very nice. There exists a fragrance that takes floral notes, merges them together successfully with darker, richer notes that typically appear in oriental fougeres, oriental fragrances, and comes up with its own really nice, spicy, slightly floral, powdery, yet extremely woody fragrance, and that is Mandarina Duck Black. Tonka bean and sandalwood add some cream to the mix with a little bit of sweetness. It is an extremely well-balanced, unique, oriental fragrance that's perfect for cooler weather. Mandarina Duck Black is gonna project fairly well. Such a unique spicy fragrance and there's a little bit of polish or shine to Mandarina Duck Black that allows it to be semi-formal. So if you're looking for a black tie affair, this is not your fragrance. If you're looking for a semi-formal engagement fragrance, such as a board meeting, Mandarina Duck Black, very signature scent worthy, especially in the cooler weather. These cooler climbs that we're currently experiencing are the pedestal on which this shines. So I highly recommend checking out Mandarina Duck Black. This next designer house has quite a few fragrance releases. Some of them are lackluster, but the ones that are good are really good. And this is one of those, so you wanna pay attention to this particular release from Perry Ellis. And it came out in 2014 and it is... Perry Ellis Cobalt. It's in the unusual looking flack and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Let's check out that presentation. combination of silver and cobalt, the actual color. 
a kind of a see-through center. It's just a really neat looking bottle sitting on your shelf. Zesty bergamot, mandarin orange. You've got uh, spicy clary sage. There's rosemary in here. There's other woody notes as well. And to top off that masculine but simple scent profile, ginger to make it all kind of rise up off the skin and create that perfect, unique scent bubble and cloud. Perry Ellis Cobalt. Let's check out that juice. This one here is gonna prove itself in just a moment to be a really good winter fragrance. The very top opens with a very cool, it's almost like a cool minty freshness, which is that combination of, of rosemary, clary sage, and bergamot together. It's bright, yet it's spicy. This fragrance to me is so unique because it's a perfect blend of those spices to come off with those two particular colors. So if color combinations are your thing, blue and silver, wonderful duo just like black and gold is they capture the essence in here spicy woody bright unique scent profile i think it's important to make the distinction that not all oriental fougeres are just for winter and not all fragrances with bright fruity juicy and spicy notes of them are just for warmer weather or for spring this fragrance is one of those year-round fragrances. It's got some really good legs on it too. Performance is great. This is good for formal wear. This is also good for casual wear. Designed to be the answer for any situation and an accommodation for any environment. You might have heard of Francis Kirkshawn. Not that he's iconic or anything, Baccarat Rouge 540. But in 2007, Narciso Rodriguez released for him. Often just called Narciso Rodriguez. Simple equals elegant. You've got lavender, pink pepper, and violet in the top. A heart note of musk resting on a base of amber and patchouli. Let's check out that presentation. Resting in a beautifully elegant bottle style reminiscent of Dolce & Gabbana, the one, the glass is super thick on this, super heavy. Feels very well made. The atomizer looks very intense, very well made as well. I feel like the juice is gonna come out in a nice cloud. Really nice dispersion. This comes out in a very fine mist or a fine spray. It spreads it nice, thinly, and evenly. It's got a very niche-like quality. Violet and Lavender are a great duo, and it's got a really rich, almost herbal, botanical feel about it, like a combination of really high-grade essential oils. You've got this earthy patchouli that's in there, but then you've got this heady violet that just adds a splash of color. There's almost like an effervescence to the violet in here as well. So there's a white musk in the heart of this that gives this like an attractive luxurious quality to it and then you've got that rich amber that warms everything up so this would be a very cool fragrance without amber and patchouli i really like just how synergistically all of these notes are working together to come up with a very unique scent profile so you've got the additional botanical spice of an essential oil from lavender and then of course that pepper there's a lot of movement a lot of dynamic movement involved in that synergy between that pink pepper and the, and the violet. Amber brings it all together though with a really nice warm palette. It kind of warms things up, keeps them from being super cool, and that's why this is perfect for cooler weather. You've got that really nice warm heart, just like a fireplace in the center of the fragrance. That amber is radiating heat, allowing the other fragrant notes to do their thing without overtaking it. Get some really nice green tones. This particular fragrance really represents, out of all of these, standing on your own, defining who you are with your own distinct spark of individuality and creativity. That is what For Him is all about. This is a multi-layered, very extremely nuanced and textured fragrance. Kind of a complex scent profile for just having a few fragrances. And that's a sign of a master perfumer. If you can take just a few fragrance notes and you can come up with something like this, you are an amazing artisan. For Him by Narciso Rodriguez. Bringing us back around and all the way downtown is an older fragrance that came out in 1995. You may have never heard of it before. Before today, I hadn't heard of it. From Success de Paris, Fujiyama Gentleman. Let's check out that presentation.
Just like all of these have been, Fujiyama Gentleman is an eau de toilette concentration, 100ml bottle, considered an oriental spicy fragrance, cinnamon, aniseed, musk, lavender, violet, all sitting on top of a base of creamy vanilla. So with all those notes in there, obviously you can tell that it's an oriental fragrance. It's supposed to be kind of mysterious and seductive. Let's check out that juice. I'm all about being mysterious and seductive, but with this fragrance, you don't want to be dated. Let's see if it, if it lives past 1995 with a classic vibe. Let's check it out. What they've really done is they've gone a little bit heavy on the cinnamon and the aniseed. Aniseed comes off kind of almost astringent, very herbal. I'm curious to see what this will do on skin. I don't have anything on the top of my hand. Let's check it out. The design of the atomizer is relatively unique. Um, there is no lid to come off. So this is solid on either side. You've got your atomizer in the very middle. You just depress and it just comes out there. So interesting design. The lavender violet mix in this is such a good combination and it's really a neat juxtaposition between Narciso Rodriguez for him and Fujiyama Gentleman. For him is a very violet specific fragrance and this is more of a lavender specific. The lavender in this is very similar to Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal, believe it or not. So let's just say you have Le Mal and you took the sweetness out of Le Mal, you would have Fujiyama Gentleman. Now when you first spray this, that opening is not at all like Le Mal. That's the furthest thing from your mind. In fact, you're thinking of medicinal, uh, herbal, but when it starts drying down, yeah, when this starts drying down, it becomes a completely different fragrance than what it is in the very open. Very much like a softer, less sweet Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal. I don't know if anyone has drawn that comparison, but if you've smelled this, there's really no way, if you've smelled also JPG Le Mal, there's no way to not make that reference in your head just because of the scent profile itself. It's not super punchy in terms of weight, so there's a lightness to this. It's a really nice, for coming out of 1995, I feel like Fujiyama Gentleman is a little bit ahead of its time. A great addition to your winter oriental spicy fragrance rotation, Fujiyama Gentleman. John Varvedos has struck a bold pose with many of his fragrance releases and none more than one that he released back in 2016. That is is Dark Rebel Rider. Let's check out that presentation. Dark Rebel Rider is an eau de toilette concentration, comes in a 125 ml bottle that looks like you just pulled it off the back of a motorcycle. It is covered in leather. It has two zippers on either side. You can see that they're, they're actual zippers that actually work. It's got the typical fleur-de-lis on the very top. That really nice leather feel. It's obvious that this is for the ultimate bad boy. That's a really nice smelling leather actually. Let's check out that juice. Like all John Varvedos fragrances, he's got the John Varvedos around the atomizer itself. Bitter orange, it's got citron, um, aldehydes that make it very powdery. It's got saffron, marjoram, hyssop, florentine, iris, osmanthus, absolute. It's got black violet, it's got labdanum, it's got Somalian incense, Sumatra benzoin, tolu balm, Russian leather, cocoa absolute, vanilla, atlas cedar, patchouli, other woody notes. There's a tremendous amount of notes in this. It's balsamic, it's powdery, it's earthy, it's resinous. Uh, it's rich, it's lightly sweet. This fragrance has bits and pieces of the best features of all man's fragrance. It's a really, really good combination and it draws them all together in such a pleasing way. This opens up your palate to a much richer experience when it comes to earthy resins like a dark resinous uh, hyssop, the marjoram, the resinous incense is so good. And then the hard edge of those resins are softened a little bit with that the powdery aldehydic heart. Plus that osmanthus and that black rock rose reminds me a little bit of Toy Boy. It's not like super floral rose. It's just a darker, richer, drier rose. Which opens it up a little bit more to versatility. So you can use this on a lot more 
situations, I think, that are more appropriate than you can Dark Rebel. Dark Rebel Rider adds a little bit of sweetness to the scent profile, which makes that DNA a little bit more malleable. I, I would take it off the books for this to be used in formal situations. If you want a signature scent that says, no toxic masculinity here, but is unapologetically masculine, supremely manly and magnetic, and who can resist a presentation like that? I mean, I don't care if you ride a bike or not, this is pretty badass. Guys, thanks so much for stopping by and checking out my video today of five unique fragrances that will help you stand out from the crowd. As always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you tomorrow.